Hello everyone, welcome back to Space for Edit. Now today is a very a lovely Monday and we all know how we love Mondays. So I had a client meeting scheduled for today and then a nice little catch up in the afternoon with a friend that I've not seen for ages. But as I was leaving, my car decided to do this. So as you can imagine, without a car, there is no client meeting and there is no lovely cash up in the afternoon. But uh, this girl right here uh, does not take no for an answer and she has figured out how to use this time wisely. So I have come up with six tips on how to successfully carry out your first briefing session slash client meeting. So yeah, let's get going. So step number one, that's two. Step number one, do your research. Most likely you have either received the brief by your line manager or senior designer, or if you are working on your own, you have probably received an email or a call already from your potential client. So what you need to do now is either give them a ring back or follow up with a introduction email just to break the ice. Maybe there are some site photos that you could get, plans of the space, either PDF or CAD. It doesn't really matter at this stage. You just want something tangible that you can kind of go over yourself and look through so you are better prepared for the meeting ahead. Step number two, pack your bag. So for today's meeting, I decided to pack quite lightly. Um, usually you might need a few more items but let's just go through what I've got here and then I can tell you more about what other extra items you could take along. Number one. Tape measure. Got it. In general it's just a nice quick tool to have on hand and later on while you're doing the site survey this comes very handy when you need to do those little nooks and crannies and just quickly go around them and measure them up. The next item, lovely, a laser measure. Ooh, a laser. Uh -oh. Ooh, probably should not do that. So a laser is a very, very good tool for basically any spaces, ceiling heights, cross dimensions. Usually the ones that you get, you can see the last three readings. So if you're going hectically through the space, you've not got much time, you can just go oh, bang, bang, bang. And you've got three readings, you make a note of it and you carry on. But this little buddy is your friend. Next thing, obviously you need your notebook, your notepad, at least two colors of pens or pencils to make sure that you've got the contrast of dimensions and the actual comments on the plan and a notebook take notes of everything that you hear that you see that you come up with any ideas on the spot it is just great to have this body with you so that was sort of the quick setup that i decided to take with me to today's meeting usually you would also have an a3 pad with more like a hardcover backing so you can go over the space take your measures it's just a better size to be working on rather than this tiny little thing. Now some other extras that you might want to consider to bring with you is any printouts of existing plans and also maybe a laptop or an iPad. Type in a quick search maybe on Pinterest or on Google just to refer to some sort of ideas that the client has seen or maybe something that comes into your head and you really just want to kind of throw it out there and um, see what the response is. But you know, it's an extra. Carrying around a laptop is a pain in the backside, I'm telling you that. And add it up with all the other gadgets that you need to take with you, um, you might want to consider to miss that one out. Or leave it in the car. And if the need be, then you can always just, you know, pop back out and come back with your nice little flashy laptop. Be confident and not arrogant. I might sound like a broken record here, but I cannot stress enough how important it is to give that first good impression and gain your client's trust. So with this in mind, you need to make sure you present your very best self. Show your knowledge, share your ideas on the spot, but don't give them too much. Leave some room for improvement. Don't make any promises yet 
just sort of throw some little sparkles here and there just to keep that conversation nice and creative and be more of a listener instead of a leader of the conversation. Your time to lead will come, I promise, that final presentation, concert presentation, uh, that's going to be your time to shine. But now just listen to the client, take in the surroundings, take notes and also remember time is money and that money belongs to both sides, to you as well as your client. Your client probably has got hundreds of other things planned for the day so make sure you don't hold them up for too long. Obviously don't rush it, you still need to make sure you've covered everything, that all your questions are answered and you've got all the information that you need and also sometimes it could be that the roles are sort of reverse clients sometimes get very comfortable and very creative with the ideas so you find yourself just going around in circles and discussing the same things the same details so you need to make sure you wrap it up and get yourself out of there because honey you got some money to make and there is no money to be made if you're standing around chit chatting and doing small talk yeah, number four. take notes of everything and by taking notes i mean take actual physical notes in your notebook take um what do you call it mindful mental take mental notes got it and take photographs so everything that needs to be covered from ceiling all the way down to the flooring make sure you cover everything what is the current ceiling situation is the client looking to change the ceiling maybe change the tiles or put some new bulkheads in or take the existing out take note of the existing lighting situation what is the general lighting like are there any feature lights are they keeping any of those feature lights what state is the actual existing furniture in if this is a restaurant or maybe an office space are they keeping any of the existing furniture if they are, trusted buddy over here out and get your notebook and make measurements. Draw a little tiny sketch on, your, on the side and take measurements of those items because when it comes to 3D modeling and planning, you will need everything. Step uh, number five. Ugh. That didn't work out. So before you leave, you want to make sure you've got a clear vision of what your deliverable is. Ah, is it just a proposal? Is it just a mood board? Or do they want the visuals? Do they want more of an in-depth research? And step number six. So after the meeting, when you are back in the office, go quickly over your notes and make sure that everything makes sense. Because most of the times we tend to just scribble away and something that makes sense on the spot will not make sense in two weeks time when you actually get to sit down maybe add some additional comments and the last step I would say is the follow-up email just so you have it all black on white a quick sort of a overlook of the day overlook of the brief to make sure that again you are on the same pages and the client knows what sort of information you have taken on to kind of bounce off from and start to work on your proposal you can mention the deadlines you can talk about any sort of references that client sort of mentions and promise to send over to you so it's more like taking the ball and throwing it back to their court so you've done your job and your side of things and you can rest peacefully tonight so yeah that is it a really quick video today just quick six tips that you should stick to throughout your clients meeting I would as always love to hear from you guys so uh, let me know in the comment section below how you feel about your initial client meetings what you struggle with or maybe what you really enjoy about them and if there's any questions you want to ask just shoot them away all right well that's it for today i shall see you next time bye